hello and welcome back and today we want to continue our look at NAS based hard drives with today us focusing on the Seagate 14TB Iron Wolf NAS hard drive and comparing it against the brand new WD Red 14TB hard drive. We've got two of each of these drives in a RAID 1 environment and what we're going to be doing today is comparing these two sets of drives in a multitude of different ways to see how their performance differs. Now, it's worth bearing in mind, we're not gonna try to say which one's better today because ultimately, these are different drives, the way they're constructed and moreover, when you're buying NAS drives, you're gonna be fo fully populating a device almost always at different drives at different budgets at different cash levels and more i will try to highlight the individual differences between these drives as this may be important throughout this comparison but it's worth highlighting that overall i'll only really be focusing on these drives by name and never making full judgments where possible that is for you the viewer to do but We've got the Seagate Iron Wolf RAID 1, we've got the WD14TB RAID 1, both of them have got an overall capacity of 12.73 terabytes, is what you expect. And we've created them in this RAID environment using two of each drive, and we can ignore the system doing its own internal operations because I've installed a 4TB drive that's got the OS and the apps all installed. These drives are only going to be used for this test. Respectively, I've created shared folders on each of the individual um, storage pool and volumes, and both of them arrive with 6.29 gigabytes of um, data arranged across 685 files and 25 folders. This is a multitude of music, video, photos, documents, and backups. So there we have our Seagate Iron Wolf, and if we do the same over here, we can make our way into, oh, we didn't want that, but if we go into create properties, sorry, we can see 6.29, 685, and 25 folders. Ignore all those shared folders I've accidentally created. So what we're going to do today is time for the first step of testing how long it takes each of these individual drives to um, go through multiple copy-paste environments. Now, the Seagate Iron Wolf series of drives arrives with a 7200 RPM and 256 megabytes of cache. Along with that, the drive itself retails for a little less than the WD, so it is a little bit more affordable. The WD drive arrives with a 5400 RPM of its head speed, but it arrives with, almost, uh, with 512 megabytes of cache. So this is two drives that have chosen different methods with which to build their drive, with one of them arriving with its own uh, NASware software and Seagate with their own Ironwolf software. There are advantages and disadvantages to both, but without further ado, let's start our copy and paste procedure. What we're going to be doing is copying all of that available data. We are then going to create four copies of that data in different directories. It's only six gig, but we will be creating somewhere in the region of 24 to 25 gig in multiple instances, all on the same drive at once. So let's start with the Seagate. Let's get the clock up first, and we'll pop that down there. Also, we'll get the resource monitor up so we can see how the system behaves throughout this testing procedure. And we'll put that there. And before we've even started the clock, we're going to create our test folders and we're going to call them one, two, three, and four. We'll go there and create those. Should say it's a rainy Saturday afternoon here in Britain right now, so I do apologize if you can hear the noise banging against a window nearby. And I am in quite an open server area, so I apologize for the slight echo. But let's get our copies ready. We're only going to be copying this data here. And I will be including the stoppage time um, at the end where possible. But without further ado, let's get started, right? So first and foremost, let's get that copied. Go into the first folder and paste. Next, we head back, go into two and paste. Slight delays there. You can tell the drive is already not enjoying me trying to create all these instances at once. Slight lag factor there, not to be held against the drive. And I'll tell you more about the NAS that we're going to be utilizing um, shortly. Let's get the 
measurement tool up here at the top. So it'll tell us when it's complete and we'll leave the clock on screen. Let's put that there, measurement tool there, and our clock there. So for today's video, we are using a Synology DS1019 Plus. Um, this system here arrives with a Celeron CPU. It's a quad-core J3455, 1.5 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.3 gigahertz, and it arrives with eight gig of memory. We haven't got SSD caching enabled, although I do have a video coming soon on this NAS talking about the difference between SATA SSD cache and NVMe SSD cache. So I do recommend you check that out. But we can see how long this drive is going to take to perform this action. And I'm gonna fast forward now to the completion of this test. Okay, so we're closing in at the 90% mark there and these four operations are about to conclude and I'm gonna wait until the background tasks have all completed before we stop the clock just to see how long this task has taken for the Synology to commit these copy paste actions and we're done. So we've got a speed there of three minutes and six seconds, but of course we will want to take into account the build time at the beginning during this process, but we also wanted to monitor how the drive behaved. So next up, let's reset that clock and now perform the same operation, but this time on our WD Red 14TB RAID 1 environment. So let's get our new folders created once again. Let's go to folder one, folder two, folder three, and finally folder four. Next, we want to get the copy verified. We'll get the copy done and I'm aware that I could have done this quicker using the right click option there but I'm doing this for sheer transparency but we've got our copy ready let's get our clock ready and let's get this started okay we're going to go into one we're going to commit our copy next we go back go into number two I will say straight away off the bat navigating menus seems a lot quicker on this drive and Although there are lots of things to do with the NASWare software, I would say that large area of cache is definitely going to be beneficial to this operation. Let's get all of our elements up and take a look how long this is going to take. But so far, these aren't, and this isn't too shabby a start. Um, so remember the time to beat, I believe was three minutes and six seconds. Um, but of course, there may be a slight difference in a few seconds in the beginning setup. Though it is worth highlighting that WD Red 14 TB did let me navigate a number of the options with the drive without uh, the lag that the Seagate did. That said, right now I think the Seagate might just scrape a win here in terms of the read and write overall time this operation is taking. Now, one thing to remember when we're doing tests on hard drives, of course, is it isn't like dealing with SSDs. The hard drive um, build does not allow for such high IOPS and um, simultaneous operations that that of a solid state drive does. So for those of you that do operations on your home PC or laptop, you may or may not be aware that you're almost certainly going to be running the bootable software and the core Windows or Mac software off an SSD. So don't use these indicators to be um, you know, telling of the average user environment. We are using mechanical hard drives, although there is a little bit of assistance on the fact that it's a RAID 1. So I'm gonna fast forward now to the completion of this exercise. So once again, we're entering the 90% mark for all of our operations, but it looks like the WD Red is taken a fraction slower. It was a fraction slower than that of the Seagate in the case of this particular test environment. And the test is done and it's coming at three minutes 32. So at least within the case of what we're doing, I can highlight that the WD Red 14 TB did take a fraction longer overall compared with that of the W uh, of the Seagate drive was quicker than that of the WD. I apologize. So the task manager, as you may have noticed there, the, to, I noticed that the WD utilized less power overall compared with the Seagate. 
As well as that, there was less disk utilization, and I believe that a lot of that is to do with that disk caching and that lower RPM speed. But what we're going to do now is we're going to do some compression and archiving tests. So we're going to make our way back to the Seagate Ironwolf drive, and now we're going to create four individual compressions of this data all simultaneously just to see how the system behaves. So once again, we'll get our clock back up, we'll reset the clock, and what we're going to be utilizing in this next area is to create compressions um, of these individual folders. We're going to do all four at once on a single disk. What you will see is CPU and memory utilization go up quite substantially, but given that these are both these tests are gonna conduct on the same NAS with the same CPU, we should see how these two drives behave differently overall. So let's get our clock up and begin this test now. We're going to compress number one, compress number two, compress number three, and compress number four. Once again, we'll get our tally up at the top of the screen. I hope you can see that. And we'll see how long this task is going to take. You may notice at the top of the screen that the compressions do overlap. Although they are technically being done concurrently, each individual action is being lined up and gone through one after the other, flicking between drives, uh, flicking between compressions, sorry, of folders. But we're gonna leave this now and fast forward to the completion of this compression. Right, so we're closing in on the final stages of our four-step compression test. We're in the late 90% here. I think it's all going to end in a minute. Uh, we're up to just shy. Let's see if we can get this under 18 minutes. I think we're going to be unlucky, though. Um, and this has been, on the uh, as mentioned, the Seagate 14TB Iron Wolves in a RAID 1 environment. And as it draws to a close, I'm just getting ready to stop the clock. And done. So 18 minutes and 10 seconds. And of course... Do take into account just a few seconds there just to highlight, you know, the obvious setup of this test. So I'm going to reset the clock now and we're going to do the next step, which is going to, of course, be those WD Red 14 TBs. Once again, we're going to be doing compressions of each of these one after the other, and it's all going to be within the WD Red 14 TB. One look at the performance there will show you that it has been a wild ride for that CPU. The same goes for memory utilization was pretty consistent at about 30% and disk utilization change obviously depending on the disk you're utilizing. But let's start making our way into the next step of this compression with the WD. And without further ado, let's get this started. Go there, go to compress, go to compress. I'm definitely feeling like the WD is more responsive with all these multiple operations at once. And without doing a little bit more research, which I'll probably have to do uh, for the NAS Compare article after this, I would say that cache is certainly assisting. With twice the cache of the Seagate drive, it's worth highlighting that as good as the read and write performance might be when you've got an increased RPM, there are lots of other factors to bear in mind. Um, when it comes to any kind of hard drive and a larger area of cache can be fantastically advantageous and a large area of cache will typically utilize far less power when in use than that of increased RPM and the PDFs from both Seagate and WD seem to indicate this. However, the straightforward performance benefits of 7200 versus 5400 cannot be ignored. So just like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not going to outright choose one of these two discs, uh, which is better because it does depend on what your priorities are. But I would say that the Seagate will definitely at this stage give you better read and write speeds overall, but the, uh, sorry, the Seagate will give you better read and write overall, but the WD will give you far more responsive actions. Um, and I've definitely seen that thanks to that cache. And one area that I touched on on previous videos that never really gets enough mention and I haven't really heard many people talking about this but myself. 
but the WD Red 14 TB drive is one of the quietest 14 TB drives out there. And again, you know, the NASWARE um, vibration centers that are built in are great, and Seagate have got their own Iron Wolf um, and own RV and heat centers as well. But a slower drive will utilize less power, or not slower, but a slower RPM will generate less. Um, vibration it will generate less heat utilize less power and generate less noise both of them have got their own inherent advantages and disadvantages and even now looking at the stats so far i would still go as far as to say that regardless of which drive you go for you are still getting an impressive nas drive but i'm going to stop talking now and we're going to fast forward to the end of these results Right, so we're coming into the late 90s here, and the tasks are almost complete, and it may not come as a huge surprise, but the performance of these four compressions at once between the WD Red RAID 1 and the previous Seagate RAID 1 Iron Wolves are very, very similar indeed, with a clock uh, counting down exceptionally close by. Um, I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed by the similarity between these two drives. I know a number of you following this channel in the past have argued that the drives are just the same drives with different badges on, but they're really not. There is a great deal of difference about the inside and the outside of these drives. Now, we've got this completed now at 18.08, and hopefully on screen as well, you've been following throughout the tests of these other drives. But I'm going to wrap things up here, because we've still got loads of tests to do, uh, involving QNAT NASes and these drives, as well as lots of SSD caching and tiered systems, where we're going to get these drives and pair them with the SSDs that were featured from both Iron Wolf in the 110 and the WD Red SA500 to show how these drives behave and compare in terms of performance when it comes to caching. But I'm going to wrap things up. Cheerio, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got some points you want to make on this video, maybe some observations throughout, do let me know in the comments. But there will be more follow up test comparisons on these drives and hopefully it'll help you make the choice between the right drives for you. Click like if you enjoyed it, click subscribe to learn more, and thank you for watching.